Yeah, you're listening to Hack almost five weeks since the election and now we know who the senators will be and you just heard from one of the four One Nation senators elect. Now, James Patterson is the coalition's youngest senator, in fact, the youngest member in parliament now that Wyatt Roy's gone. James, thank you for joining us. You're going to have to use all your youthful charm to keep that Senate crossbench on side. Uh, I sure am, Tom, uh, but it's an opportunity I relish. Now, we just heard Malcolm Roberts acknowledge that it was a double dissolution that allowed him to get a seat in the Senate. Does the coalition take responsibility for that? Well, certainly the double dissolution halves the quota required to get elected to the Senate. Normally it's 14.3%. In a double dissolution, it's 7.7%. Yep. Um, but I think, uh, as you know, Pauline Hanson got well over a quota on her you know, own right uh, and would have been elected had it been a normal election. And she's very likely to get a six-year term as a result of that. So there would have been a crossbench. It might have been a smaller crossbench um, had it been a normal election. Um, but the government decided it wanted to have a double dissolution uh, so that it could have the option of a joint sitting of parliament to get those two industrial relations bills through. Has it backfired? City. No, I don't think so. But you've got, um, a tough, you've got a tougher crossbench this time around, don't you, than last time? Oh, look, I don't think that's necessarily the case. That, it, it is a larger crossbench. If you include the Greens, it's gone from 18 to 20, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a more difficult crossbench. One of the things about this crossbench that's different to the previous one is there are bigger blocks involved. So Nick Xenophon has a couple of friends. Pauline Hanson has a couple of friends. Um, previously, if the government wanted to get a bill through, it had to line up, and, and it, presuming that Labor and the Greens oppose us, we had to line up six individual crossbench sure. senators. We won't have to do that this time. Um, we'll be able to negotiate with some blocks, and that might make it a bit more straightforward. Okay, and what do you think of Malcolm Roberts' views on climate change? Well, I don't share them, um, but <laughs> uh, he's uh, got as much right to be in the Senate as I do. He and his party generated significant community support and, and he's entitled to prosecute his views. Um, I think ultimately in the contest of ideas, um, uh, better ones will prevail, um, but uh, he's got every right to be there. Now, Tony Abbott's failure to win over the crossbenchers in the last term of Parliament helped contribute to his downfall. Um, will the government do, be doing anything differently this time around? Well, I think we're approaching the, the Senate um, as, as, an, as a number one focus. I think it's probably fair to say um, the Abbott government, when it was first elected, um, you know, hadn't spent a lot of time contemplating the Senate because it didn't know what the Senate would be like. Now we've had uh, three years of experience of dealing with a crossbench and with a Senate, which is um, not always going to pass our legislation. I think it's very unlikely you'll see the government proposing bills that have no prospect of passing the Senate as one example. Yeah, which I mean, I guess eventually will mean that you'll have to really engage with these people very closely, um, being close communication all the time and keep lots of, I guess, very different, um, sometimes unusual competing interests um, in mind there. Uh, should be a very interesting time, James. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, mate. Thanks, Tom. That's Senator James Patterson from the Liberal Party.